and welcome to Archives 101, Archival Records Descriptions and What to Look for When You Research. For the purpose of this video, all examples will be taken from the Ryerson University Archives and Special Collections database. We use Adam, a fairly common database being used by archives all across Canada. Now that you understand how records are organized in an archives, let's delve into the records themselves. There are six key information fields that are almost always included in a records description. They are title, reference code, dates of creation, physical description, administrative history or biographical sketch, and scoping content. All of these fields are vital in describing the records and making them accessible to researchers. Let's have a more in-depth look at each of them. You can see here this collection is titled Nicholas M. and Marilyn A. Graver Photographic Publications Collection with a reference code of F2005.003. The title at the phone level will often refer back to the record's creator, the collector, or at times the donor. The reference code is a unique number that is given to each fall record group or collection. No other records in this repository will have the same number. Any records within this group will start with 2005.003. So the eight series which this collection is divided into, the numbering would be 2005.003.1 for the first series, 2005.003.2 for the second series, and so on. Each of the lower level records would also have a unique title to go along with the reference code. These two pieces of information are always required if you ever request to view records at an archives, as this is often how the records are located by the staff. Next, let's look at dates and physical description. These are vital bits of information to a researcher and can help you narrow down your research prospects. The dates denotes the oldest and newest records, in this case in the fall. You can see the Jack Layton fall dates between 1906 and 2011. This is important because it can help you rule out the records in your search. If you are researching the late 19th century, you can see that this phone does not contain age appropriate materials for your research. Another important field is physical description. This field gives you the amounts and types of materials being described. Because I have used a phone as an example, the list is quite extensive. If you are looking for photographs, for instance, you can see there are no photographs in this phone and you would not need to look into it further. But if you are looking for correspondence, this phone contains 38 centimeters of textual records. So you would need to delve further into the phone to see if these textual or written records included correspondence. The next field is the administrative history used for businesses, schools, and corporations, or biographical sketch used for people. This is not always included with the record, but can be helpful to you if it is. You might come across multiple people or businesses or schools with the same name. This field can help you determine if the records you are viewing are for the topic of your search. This is how it appears embedded in the record in our database. Sometimes the person and or business name might appear in the record and you would need to click on the link to get the information. The next slide will show you this. This shows you the biographical sketch, including alternate forms of name and dates of existence. This can also be a good tool in your research. It shows you all the records that Robert Hackborn is associated with, which can potentially lead you to records outside of his phone. The final field is scope and content. Scope and content should differ between the high level records, R, G, F, or C, and lower level records, series, files, and items. The scope and content note at the phone level is usually a general and brief summary of the broad topics and or record types in the series that make up the phone. The scope and content note at the series file level can contain information about who created the archival materials, who the archival materials are about, who contributed to the production or authorship of the archival materials, what the archival materials are generally about, and what the main topics or subjects mentioned are. It can also include how the information is recorded, what record types are included, and how the information is presented. That being said, not all scope and content notes are that thorough. Archival record descriptions can also have many different notes fields that contain further information about the record itself and how to access it. These notes can include location of originals, 
associated materials, related materials, availability of other formats, restrictions on access, rights, and terms governing reproduction and use. Let's take a closer look at the notes fields that can help you inform your research. Locations of originals is an interesting one. It doesn't happen very often, but sometimes the archives in which you are searching does not have the original of the records in its collection. In this case, Ryerson Archives has scans of original drawings of the Toronto Normal School building. In the record, we indicate where the researcher can find the originals, including the phone name and code. Associated materials lets the researcher know if there are records housed in other archives and special collections that relate back to the records they are currently viewing. In this case, the University of Calgary's Glen Bow Library and Archives houses records that relate back to this photograph in the Charles Roy Horney Fall of the Bird of Spring sculpture. Sometimes in the record there will be a link to the source or just written details about how and where to find the associated materials. Related materials are connections between records in the same archives and special collections. It informs the researcher about other potential sources of information outside of the record they are currently viewing. In this case, RG76.14, Ryerson Media Centre, is linked to the University Advancement Subject Photographs, the Media Centre Subject Photographs Slides, and Photographic Assignments. Clicking on those links will take you to those records in the database to continue your research. Availability of other formats is a good note to look for, especially if you are searching in an archives and special collections that you are unable to visit. In this case, the note indicates the image is available in digital format. This could mean that you could have the image shared with you without having to physically visit the archives and special collections. More repositories are also attaching images to their records, making your search even easier. Final notes fields we are going to look at in depth are restrictions on access, rights, and terms governing reproduction and use. Restrictions on access let you know if the records are available for researchers to view, and if they are not, the reason why they have been restricted. Typical restrictions include open, there are no restrictions on access, restricted due to format, restricted due to condition, restricted due to privacy legislation, and restricted by donor. The last two are often accompanied by the time range for when the records will be accessible. In the case of this record, they are open for viewing without restriction, but in digital format only. Rights lets you know who owns the copyright, if there are any, on the materials you are wanting to access. In the case of photographs, it might be the photographer. This is important to note in case you are wanting access to materials for anything other than research purposes. The final field I want to highlight is the terms governing reproduction and use. This can tie into the rights field, but not always. This outlines how the records can be reproduced or copied, and also how these copies can be used. Examples or reproduction notes include copying not permitted, copying by scanner only, or reproduction by staff only. Examples of use can include permission of copyright holder required for use beyond research, or material in public domain, no restrictions on reproduction. Some other notes to consider are physical condition, conservation, source of acquisition, accruals, and language. Physical condition lets you know what state the records are in and can include terms like fragile, moldy, yellowing, brittle, image fading, vinegar syndrome, and corrosion. Conservation lets you know what, if any, work has been done on or to the records in order to extend their lives or to fix issues with their condition. Source of acquisition adds more history or context to the record, especially if the record's donor is not the same as the record's creator. Accruals let you know if this is the whole of the records or if the repository is expecting further donations of records. And finally, language lets you know what language the records are in. It is important to remember, not all archival records descriptions will contain all the fields presented in this video. For more information about archival description, please consult the Canadian Council of Archives Rules for Archival Description, Chapter 1, General Rules for Description. There are also subsequent chapters for descriptions of records in the many formats that records may come in.
Thank you for viewing Archives 101, Archival Records Descriptions, and what to look for when you research. To learn more about our Atom database, watch our introductory video, which you can find on the Ryerson Library YouTube channel.